What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Boney Alberti here. An update to my journey into the USPSA world. I've gone and attended two additional matches since our last video. If you haven't watched those yet, I'll go ahead and link the playlist above. I'll basically have match footage in the background while discussing what additional things I've learned or my progress throughout this journey. So far, I've learned that in the USPSA world, there is a mix of really cool people and people who ruin the vibe of what you're trying to do. In one of the matches that I had attended, I was squatted up with this dude who kept making unnecessary comments about things that didn't pertain to him. For example, I like to carry a tourniquet on me regardless of what I'm doing, and there's always one with me either on me or in my bag, and naturally it would carry over into the USPSA world, as my USPSA belt setup pretty much mirrors my regular range belt setups. For the most part, I carry a tourniquet using this Soul Eater belt mounted tourniquet holder. And in this case, I carry the tourniquet with the Velcro strap closed. Now I'll preface this by stating that I understand the argument about leaving the TQ Velcro in its open position, but I'm also of the opinion that no one really cares for this except for the FUDs and the absolutists of the world. It takes all but sub-seconds just to rip that sucker out, even if it was closed or if it was inadvertently closed. If you needed a tourniquet, are you going to reject one just because the Velcro strap is closed? Exactly, you won't. So, dude, shut the fuck up. Anyways, the dude goes to my other squad mate, which was a buddy of mine, and makes remark about my tourniquet being wrong, and that he was in XYZ whatever he was used to do in his previous life, and they always carried their tourniquets with the Velcro strap open. Well, you know what? That's probably part of your SOPs. I'm pretty sure there are entities out there that have their SOPs requiring it to be closed. It's up to the doc, right? This dude acted like Sam wasn't amplified from our electronic hearing protection in that I couldn't hear him or anybody else couldn't hear him. Additionally, I had a tourniquet. Did he? No, you didn't. So anyways, the dude continuously made a bunch of FUD comments like how weapon mounted lights weren't allowed in USPSA. I mean, he was obviously wrong because, well, the rules clearly stated that they were allowed. Like we were basically all there to have a fun match and prove ourselves, find out where our deficiencies are, and his antics basically ruined the vibe of the whole entire match. The dude also broke range etiquette. My buddy Hui was the timer slash scorekeeper at the time and the dude was the guy on the tablet. He tried to go against one of Hui's score calls and argue with Hui when the shooter himself didn't even argue with the score, meaning the score was good. It was like super hilarious to watch Hui scold the dude. Hui basically told him, don't look at the targets, follow me and listen to the scores that I'm calling. And then I couldn't help but notice a bunch of our other squad mates in the back just kind of chuckling at that. And it was hilarious. In another situation, one of our younger squad mates, uh, Vince, he was up for the stage. And he had a stuck round in the chamber due to the case swelling up. And mind you, this was reloaded ammunition from his quote unquote buddy, who apparently doesn't check ammunition before selling it to his quote unquote friends. But I digress. And that's uh, another topic for another time. But anyways, Hui was on the timer and called the certified RO to come and assess the situation and give instructions to Vince to clear the firearm or to clear the malfunction. And the dude walked in and interjecting himself into the situation. Like, bro, what the fuck are you doing, man? The RO was already there and now you're adding yourself and as another voice to try to confuse the shooter. Like, get the fuck out of here, dude. Back away. It's not even your wheelhouse. Regardless, it was funny to see the dude talk a big game, but we newbies like outshot him, like consistently outshot him. He basically stopped making comments after a few stages, after basically embarrassing himself. So the lesson here is don't let asshats ruin what you're doing or what you're there to do, which is basically better yourselves and have fun. These personalities are everywhere, and if you need to tell them to shut the fuck up, then do so in a respectful manner or not. Do whatever you feel like. If you want to go off on him, then go off on him. It's cool. Some people just need to be put in their place, and that's just simply the way it is. Other than him, everyone else I've met so far has been super cool and super helpful. They try to give advice when they see that it might help you improve. I'm starting to see the same faces rotate around the different clubs and matches, end up carrying conversations with them, making new connections with other people. So shout out to my squad mates from the London match for being so damn chill. I felt like we were at a barbecue just chilling, but instead with shooting. And unfortunately, no barbecue. Okay, personality rants over, onto the equipment updates portion. I'm still running my Glock 17 Gen 3 with a Chichicon SRO. 
I've come to really enjoy this setup and I think that it might send my Gen 5 17 out for stippling just to kind of do a quasi clone of this setup really. If I ever have to retire the Gen 3 or if it goes down during a match I can just pull the Gen 5 out and use it accordingly. So that's all good there. I might feel the Aimpoint Acro P2 for USPSA just to gain additional experience with it and compared against the SRO. And if I can live with it, then I might switch it out for my carries. Then again, I also like the Trigicon SRO enough to want to apply it and carry it over to my carry firearms also. Currently, I'm using the Trigicon Armor Type 2. And the Armor Type 2 has proven itself time and time again. And I really like that optic, but you know, as new technology comes out, I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of that absolute durability just for a little bit more ease of usability. And yes, I'm aware of Aaron Cowan's drop test footage. I'm also aware of the many folks out there who have reported non-issues with yeeting their Churchcon SROs out to nowhere and not breaking it, including Scott, aka Jedi, in the recent footage from Jim's Goon Life. You know, basically it boils down to making your choices, knowing the pros and cons to your decisions. And you'll probably be fine, folks, honestly. The Timney Enhanced feel shoe hasn't given me any problems in either of the two matches and all of our range sessions that I've had. I didn't expect it to since it's just replacing the OEM shoe, but I would say that this is good to go for me, but test on your own to confirm if you're going to go to that route. I am testing the Kinetic Consulting belt height modification using the Safari Land UBL High and the QLS forks. Now this is more of a Safari Land RDS specific type modification, but I wanted to try it on my USPSA setup as well since, well, it's field use, as well as the fact that in USPSA you can't use leg straps anyways. And that was the whole point of the modification is to get rid of the need for a leg strap. I am using the LAS Concealment to Zona RS, and you see the QLS fork there. It does sit a smidge higher than the Kinetic Consulting holster modification which I will show you here with my 6365 RDS holster from Safari Land. You see the modification there, and I'll bring in the LS back for you. You can see that the heights are very similar, but the LAS does sit a smidge higher when actually in use on my belt. But despite that, it didn't really affect my draw too much when swapping between the two different styles of holsters. I did notice a lack of hot spots, however, or basically the belt shroud digging into my leg, and that's always a plus. I like it so far and I think I'll leave it this way honestly and will potentially make a decision soon to swap all my belt systems over to this UBL high method. That's pretty much it for equipment updates. I do need to source dedicated shoes for USPSA though. I slipped a few times in the last match that had sand and loose gravel. I mean that was a fun time. <laughs> you experienced folks out there, if you have any recommendations please comment and let me know down below if you have any type of shoes that you use dedicated for this sport or any type of that gravel or terrain. I do have Solomon boots, but those are boots and sometimes in the summer it gets freaking damn hot so I kind of want something a little bit more low profile. You know what I mean? Probably some trail shoes or so. Thanks in advance folks. As far as improvement in techniques or so, I've been watching a lot of content from the pros out there and attempting to apply the techniques that I'm watching without formal instruction of course. JJ Ricasa recently posted on his Instagram alluding that efficiency is more important than absolute speed while providing context via the stage footage that he was showing. And that post heavily resonated with me and I totally understood the concept of what he was referring to. I've learned so far that even though I am a decent shooter and good at individual skills, I'm so-so at combining them all together for the purposes of USPSA. I feel like I'm starting to get into the groove now and starting to apply the combination of skills naturally as I progress and gain more experience in this sport or just generally through practice. Thanks to the homies and being able to have video footage as we're going through practice or even stages in formal matches, we can dissect exactly what we're doing during each stage. Thanks to this footage, I was able to see things that I didn't realize that I was doing, like starting to move away from the targets while I was shooting at them in order to shorten the distance to the next target. I guess, target transitioning? 
It'll take a bit of time, but I think I can apply the economy of motion principle to what I'm doing here in USPSA, as I've done with any other activity that I have personally had years behind, such as the martial arts world or driving or XYZ activity that I've done. And I think for the next few steps, I want to work on target transitions or getting better or more efficient at them and always try to keep moving to some degree to make up time or to make up distance as well as cadence of shooting. I think that's something that I definitely need to work on is the cadence between targets. From analyzing my videos, it looks like it's currently pop, pop, move, pop, pop, move, pop, pop versus pop, 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 pop while moving. And that's something that I need to work on. Another thing is also remembering that in a calm stock stage, I can take the extra shot on a target for peace of mind. Even though it costs me a little bit of time, I think that that peace of mind might help, especially at the current level that I'm at. So as you can see, there's a lot for me to do here, folks. And I certainly appreciate the folks that have been following along and for giving me advice along the way, as well as the folks who are around my same level of entry into the USPSA world. We can vibe and basically resonate with each other's experiences. Thank you all for that. Thank you all for following along. As usual, comment below with your thoughts or any additional advice that you have for me. Let me know what you're doing if you're in the same position as I am. Please do like the video and forward it to other newbies to let them know that they're not alone in this USPSA world. If you haven't subbed yet, hit that subscribe button down below as well as the notification bell to stay up to date on my releases. YouTube for some reason doesn't like gun channels, so they don't tend to push my videos out to the other folks that are out there. As usual, check the video description for discount codes for my friends in the industry. That's it for today. Thank you all for watching. I look forward to reading your comments below. I'll see you in the next video. Bunny Operator, signing out.